They screwed me out of my pay, I screwed them out of their company. Many years ago I got a job with a marketing company during phone deregulation. It was the wild west and a lot of small long distance companies sprang up, all trying to get a piece of the pie. Eventually, they all got bought up by the bigger fish, but at the time they were all paying hired gun marketing firms very well to score contracts for them to lock people in. I got a job with one of those marketing firms, a new age capitalism company that insisted we all do yoga and breathing exercises while they rang a little bell and gave us affirmations about how many contracts we were all going to sell and how much money we'd all make. The job was 100% commission, but I was always good at sales so I looked at the pay scale and noticed that it was exponential, presumably to entice people to work hard with impossible payouts. We were allowed to work as many or as few hours as we wanted, with the payout based on your weekly sales numbers. I decided I would give it a shot for one week to see how much I could realistically make before deciding whether I was willing to put up with the tasteless vegan snacks and mandatory voluntary yoga regime. For the next week, I pushed myself as hard as I could. For 7 straight days, I worked 14 plus hour days every single day and used every trick and technique I'd learned doing sales to score as many contracts as I possibly could. I figured this would tell me my maximum possible income and could decide on that basis whether to stay. At the end of the week, I had blown everyone else out of the water. In fact, I had not just gotten more contracts than anyone there had ever seen in a week, I had gotten more than any of them had seen in a month. Because of the exponential scale, I realized that I was making absolutely ridiculous amounts of money, $10k plus a week. They had never expected anyone could actually hit those kinds of numbers. Coming in the next week, expecting a huge payday, I ended up with about 5% of what I expected. They told me there were problems with a lot of my contracts, and that I would be allowed to fix them and submit them a few at a time over the next several weeks. These problems were things like an apostrophe wasn't quite clear or the dash in someone's phone number was slightly crooked. They were going to screw me. That night I got a phone call from the company's office manager, Frank, who wanted to meet up for a drink. Curious, I agreed. Over beers, Frank told me that the owners of the company were in a panic because I would have bankrupted them. He said they spread out all my contracts on the floor of the office, then they crawled over them, inspecting each one and trying to figure out if I was committing some kind of fraud. When they comprehended that all my contracts were legit, they decided they had no choice but to screw me over. Frank told me he realized at that point that if they would screw me, they'd screw him too and, besides, he was tired of doing yoga. He asked me if I would be interested in going into business with him and going head to head with his bosses. I thought it sounded intriguing, but I asked him how he thought we could compete. Frank explained that he had found out they didn't actually have the contract for our city. They were acting as independent contractors for another company that had the contract to market the service in an entirely different city. They were poaching here because the person who did have the contract wasn't actively using it. We put together a pitch and approached the guy with the real contract, Joe, and told him about the people poaching his turf. We agreed that we'd split with him, we'd take the upfront money for each contract, and he'd get the back-end money down the road. It was a good deal for everyone, so Joe contacted the phone company and had them threaten the poachers with a big lawsuit if they didn't stop. A week later Frank and I strolled into the offices of our old employer. Most of the furniture, and all the yoga mats, was gone, and there was just a table, a couple of filing cabinets, and a file box with the final pay envelopes for everyone. I made a show of counting my money to make sure it was all there, and the two owners, husband and wife, told Frank and I bitterly that they'd had to take cash advances on their credit cards for this money, and asked me if I felt guilty for destroying their lives. I smiled and said, nope, and left. Our marketing company made us a lot of money over the years until the company got bought up by Sprint and the gravy train ended. What was the biggest scandal at your high school? I believe it was junior year of high school when a new girl came to school. She had evidently been in foster care for a while and had been adopted by a family whose son went to our school. She joined shortly thereafter. We will call her Aiden. She began hanging out with our friend group right away which is how I met her. We were a giant group that was made up of a bunch of smaller subgroups, so I assumed one of the other subgroups had invited her in and everyone welcomed her. She had a very vivacious personality, she was funny, outgoing and generally liked to have fun. But there were definitely things she did that we found annoying at times. She could be a little too over the top and she also seemed to assume a level of companionship that just wasn't there. She eventually started dating our friend, Joey. We thought they were a good match because both of them had outgoing personalities. However, it didn't take long for Aiden's behavior to become out of line and even to some level, kind of abusive. She could be mean to him and that all came to a blowout during prom night where she essentially threw a massive fit and they broke up. If I remember correctly, I believe she actually attacked and scratched him right on the dance floor in front of several of our friends. Joey was very badly hurt by this and everyone was on his side. Her behavior had been a public spectacle, many of us had seen what happened and the rest of us were all filled in on the story. Basically, we rallied around helping and healing Joey. Aiden was no longer welcome to hang out with us. Aiden seemed to get the message pretty loud and clear. When she ran into me and my subgroup of friends she approached us and asked do you hate me too, like everyone else. Since we tended to try and be nicer and drama free we told her we didn't hate her, told her we were sorry for what happened but we still made no efforts beyond that. She knew that she had messed up and that we were not going to go out of our way to maintain any friendship. It didn't seem to affect her for long before she became close with her foster brother and started hanging out with his friends. We still believed she was crazy but none of us minded the fact that she had moved on, except there were some whispers that the relationship between her and her foster brother seemed a little too close. Eventually, the two began full-blown dating to the shock and awe of much of the student body. They would post videos and photos of themselves at home, frolicking on the couch, kissing all over each other and lying on top of one another. Now, they weren't biological brothers and sisters. But there was still something a bit weird about a guy dating his sister. And according to them, their parents knew and were okay with it. 
So, their very outward acts of affection were broadcast frequently at school and at home apparently with the knowledge of their parents, and then there came a day that changed it all. Allegedly, Aiden completely snapped while at home. The family not only had her brother slash boyfriend but they also had smaller children in the home as well. Aiden and her brother slash boyfriend had been left home alone with the kids that night while their parents were out. I don't know specifically what started the issue but as far as I'm aware it was just that the younger kids had begun acting up and made Aiden angry. She broke into a massive screaming rage, grabbed a kitchen knife and allegedly chased the children around the house, screaming and threatening them with a knife. I'm not sure if the parents either got home right as it was happening or if they had just been home the entire time but they saw it and had to stop her. They decided that they could not help Aiden with her problems and she was taken out of the home, which leads me to assume she really was a foster kid and not their officially adopted child but I'm not sure. Her brother slash boyfriend and her broke up and I believe he had witnessed the entire thing. He was completely devastated by what happened. Not only had he faced teasing about the fact that he was dating his sister but now it turned out that she had attacked his family, been kicked out and now he was left angry and heartbroken at the same time. He legitimately was extremely hurt by this event and he didn't necessarily have a lot of people to turn to. As for what happened to Aiden, she never came back to school after she was kicked out. It was immediate, she was there one day and gone the next. Our friend group did manage to track her down on social media however, since many of us had been friends with her on Facebook we monitored her activity. From what I know, I think she wound up with one other family for a short time but she eventually ran away to go live with an older man slash boyfriend. She lived emancipated at that point, jumping between 20 plus year old men, cheating on them and then moving to another. The next update we saw she had gotten pregnant and had a baby. I witnessed the very classy photo of her, with her baby lying down on the bathroom counter, while she posed half naked in the mirror with a duck face, hashtagging that she is a hot mom or something to that effect. And a little while later, she had one baby, was pregnant with another and was still doing the hot mirror selfies. I don't know what became of her since then. I just feel bad for the children.
and I said to myself maybe it was something really important to him because, in the 10 years since he signed up, he hardly shared anything. And then, I scrolled down and got the biggest shock of my life. Martin and Amy had just gotten married. What the hell just happened? How was it even possible? And then I remembered Amy getting the info that I stole her photos to catfish Martin. It was now clear that Martin had gotten in touch with Amy to inform her about me, and they started seeing each other after the mess. It turned out that I was the one who made their love story possible.